Welcome back. You're watching Ask the Handicapper. A couple of things I wanted to ask you, Phil, that I've noticed over the last week or so. Um, there was a handicap hurdle at Newton Abbott on the 1st of July. It was won by Vino de Coche, and I think Mike Cat was around at the time. And he thought, basically, that you had really messed up giving that horse a mark of 112. The counter-argument is it was 25 to 1, suggesting that trainer Martin Hill didn't think it was absolutely chucked in. But it, with the benefit of hindsight, you messed up, didn't you? 112 was far too low for the French import. Well, you've got to give the trainer some credit. Um, you know, the horse had come from France. He... We, we were perfectly happy with the rating. He, as you say, he was 25 to 1, so nobody thought before the race <coughs> that he was uh, advantaged. But, of course, what the, the key thing that the trainer did is he massively stepped the horse up in trip, and the horse either showed improvement for going to Martin's yard and or uh, showed improvement for completely, you know, change of trip, going three and a quarter. He had been running uh, in, in his previous life over hurdles over two miles. So it was a huge step up in trip. Those things happen. We've just been talking about some mark and we called it good training and, and very clever. So well done, Martin Hill. I don't think it's... We, we, we were perfectly happy with the rating that came from France. It, co it coincided with the ratings that we had for those races in France. So Vernon de Cochet, perfectly OK. And interestingly... Well, hold on. What have you put it up to? Well, it's, we put him to 123, <laughs> up 11. But it's very interesting. You were talking earlier about horses going up over one code for what their performance is on the other. He was the one horse that Martin Greenwood sent to me this year, this week, who I did put up his chase mark because of his good hurdle run. Remember, there were seven who went down. There was that, that's the one that went up. Vernon de Cochet. I put him from 116 over fences to 123 over fences. So he's now 123 on both. OK. And the Lancashire Oaks, endless time for Godolphin. Good weekend, of course, for Godolphin with Hawkbill in the Eclipse and, mm. and endless time. Good weekend for them. How good a Lancashire Oaks was that? It came rattling through at the end, didn't it? Well, it was a really difficult race to assess. And on the same phone call that I was talking to Dominic about his Eclipse, I asked him about my Lancashire Oaks. Um, what, you know, what should I do with, with that? Uh, the big problem with the Lancashire Oaks is it was run five seconds slower than the following Old Newton Cup. So you generally find in those circumstances that you get all of the horses scrunched together with no, you know, not enough differentiation. So if you look on the chart that's in front of you now, um, Endless Time goes in on 107. I've promoted her to 110. I didn't think Furia Cruzada got the best of rides, just a personal opinion, so I didn't believe that she could have replicated her 110, so I had her a little bit lower. She was kept at the back in a slowly run race and finished like a train, so I've kept her post-race 110, but I've only got her performing a little bit less. But then here's another two, example of two horses that get quite heavily raised for, for performances in a Group 3. Loving Things, 102, goes to 108. Uh, Nightflower is German, uh, and then Lady of Camelot finishes fifth in the race, started, goes in of 93, performs to 107. Um, did I think it was a good Lancashire Oaks? I thought it was a very modest right. Lancashire Oaks. Um, they're all too close together. I'd be looking at these horses again next time, and if they can't replicate that, they'll be dropped. OK. Still, at least it was a terrific eclipse. Um, uh, I thought it was a terrific. Event. I know you did. I think uh, you'll be disappointed in time. Uh, Matt Bizogno, who's uh, on Twitter, he writes some superb racing blogs. Uh, unfortunately for you, Phil, he's one of the more cleverer uh, analysts out there. Mm -hmm. um, snappy Poet, look that up on your computer. He says, why was the Snappy Poet given eight pounds less than his last mark for sitting in a box for 18 months? He wins. And immediately reverts to his prama. Is it called the snappy poet? Or the snappy poet. The I think, snappy yeah. poet. Thank you. Yeah. Wouldn't be a horse that I'm familiar with. Clearly, but we'll look him up. Clearly. Still, there's probably a blog we can look at it online. No, no. He's a hurdler, so I've never dealt with him. Um, OK. Doesn't run for from the 26th of October 2014. You drop him £8. We dropped him... Uh, no, we didn't drop him £8. Oh, Matt, you haven't got this wrong. Surely. Bizogno wouldn't get this wrong. Uh, you did drop him, mate. No, we dropped him seven. From 109 to 102. He was 109 on the 29th of October 2014. Why does everyone else think it's eight and you think it's... Because they're wrong. 
uh, and because it's straight in the computer. He was 110 on the 26th of October. He ran off 110 and he, he was dropped to 109 on the 29th of October and then he came back you on... You are absolutely being as anarchy as you have ever been. He was dropped eight. He ran off 110 and then he was... Next no, time he ran, it he, was 102. He was dropped a pound in yeah, but that we don't know race. that. He, he, was, he was dropped eight. Matt, I'm not being anarchy, I'm being right. <laughs> OK, there's a big difference. <laughs> you, you, and off air, after this, you will laugh at this moment, even though you're trying to keep a straight face back, because you know how bad you're being at this okay. minute. So it was eight pounds. So he then ran off, he then should have run off 102. As it happened, the jockey weighed in a pound overweight. So he actually ran off 103, and he's gone to 110. Back to the mark he was. Now, why do we do it, OK? Because I generally find, when a horse has been off for the best part of two years, it's for a reason that they've been, you know, quite seriously injured over that time. And very few horses are able to replicate what they could do in the past. So we generally find that we drop horses, especially those horses that weren't running so well when they were last running. So here's a horse that his previous runs were fifth and fifth. Right, so it wasn't exactly fifth of seven, fifth of eight. Now, had the horse been a winner last time, then he maybe wouldn't have got anything like that drop. But a horse has been finished fifth of seven, fifth of eight. He had a deteriorating profile. We gave him uh, some uh, some help to get back running again. Fantastic. He's he's won uh, uh, the race at Worcester, first of eight, uh, and he started at eight to one. So fantastic. I'm really impressed that Matt's clearly got a brilliant eight to one winner then because his view is that this was incredibly generous before the race or after the race, which would, which would it be? Oh, look at you, you've really turned, haven't you? You have really become a bitter old man. And, and uh, so, you really so, so actually, it was after the race that he's... That he's I don't know, I, don't, well, I wouldn't like to put well, words I, in I, one of our well, viewers. Well, I, I, like I, hope, I hope your viewer's got a really good eight to one winner because he spotted it before the race. And did you feel the same about your philosophy of dropping horses after a break when Barney Curley had it right off? Well, again, uh, that's going to happen on periodically, and you have to take it on the chin. A beaten handicapper. Uh, Rob Cullimore, does the level of experience... You were slagging one or two jockeys in the Lancashire Oaks just now. No, one. Yeah, one jockey in the Lancashire Oaks. Specifically, you picked him out. Um, Rob Cullimore says, does the level of experience of the jockey affect the amount of a horse's handicap? Do you take no. note of... How no. classy, look, Ryan Moore, a £7 claimer? Oh, well, first of all, the £7 claimer clearly carries £7 less in the race, but all we do is we add that £7 back into the rating uh, because Ryan Moore is £7 superior to a £7 claiming jockey. Um, I don't think anybody would dispute that. So the, that, the, the, the jockey's claim is for inexperience, uh, so, but all we do with, the, with regard to the weight is we add it straight back in. OK, OK, let's go back uh, to the top of the list, see if we've got some uh, mm -hmm. slightly new questions coming in. Um, this is a great question from Paul. Phil, can I ask you a question and insist you answer it? I'll do my best. OK. On a scale of 0 to 10, how does Phil rate the Irish handicappers? Oh, 9.995. Really? Mm. So you felt they got Darman King correct? Well, they, he was competitive in Ireland, but we have a different system, Irish and, Irish and UK jump racing. So there's always an adjustment, as you know. OK. OK. And I wanted to ask you about Order of St George, mm. because people are saying this is going to be the next Yates. Um, is Order of St George a spectacular Gold Cup? Well, I, I personally look quite like the Luca Kamani horse as a solid yardstick. I think he's. I was impressed with Order of St George in the race. Um, you know, he's he, he's run a real good race. I suspect that we may see him uh, not necessarily over a staying distance next time. I could see him being a type of Ardross type horse. So it'd be no surprise to me that if we see him running at, in a Group One over a mile and a half, I, I could see him running a big race in the in the arc. What's his rating? Sorry, he's well from last year. He was 124. Right. Um, but but from from this year. From that particular race, we didn't have him quite performing to that level. I think we had him performing to 119, maybe 120 in that race. But you know, but for this stage of the season, you know, he's he he's certainly you know that's a that's a good performance in that category. 119, 120, mm -hmm. which would make him four pounds inferior to Harzand. And how much no, weight for age would Harzand get well, at the moment? Well, ha Harzand is a two pound better horse, but the weight for age is calculated in. But let's, let's, com let's compare him with postponed. Is it really calculated? Yeah, calculated. The Philly stuff isn't calculated in. Correct. 
So, okay. so let's let's compare them with postponed because they're the same age. Is it really calculated? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. So postponed is 124. Order in St George was 124 last year, and we've got him performing to. I mean, the international handicappers vary from 119 to 120 for his performance in the in the Gold Cup, but his his rating is in Ireland is still 124. Uh, it'd be really interesting to see can he compete with postponed in a, in a Group One mile and a half race. Um, or will they carry on keeping him and go, and go to Goodwood, where the Goodwood Cup is worth a fortune now, uh, go to Doncaster for that race, um, and then still end up in the arc? So I, I'd be fascinated to see the direction they go with Order of St George. I certainly can't see any horse beating Order of St George this year over two miles or further, bar one. That is one horse who I think could give him a real good run over two miles or more, and that's Vazirabad who ran in the Grand Prix de Saint-Cloud at the weekend and was yeah. a little, little bit disappointing. Very disappointing. A little bit disappointing, but I suspect Very. that when he comes back to two miles and two miles plus, he'd give Order of St George a bump for his money. Will Order of St George automatically be top weight in the Melbourne Cup because it's won the Ascot Gold Cup? Um, I, that'd be up to Greg Carpenter. But uh, Does it, Greg not ring you and say... Phil, what do you think? It, I, I don't ring people when I'm doing the Grand National. Why should he ring me? Might, if he wants to ask my advice, I'd give it, but he doesn't need it. He's perfectly capable of making the decisions himself. But you don't really think that, do you? I do think that. You, you don't really the, the think Melbourne these people Cup's are really The Melbourne Cup is a fantastic race every year. He does a brilliant if, job. If you thought other racing authorities were completely capable, mm -hmm. why do you keep your own Irish ratings and not rely okay. on the Irish ratings? Greg Carpenter's in Australia. I know, but... And in Ireland, we keep our own ratings because they work on a different system. And, when, and you're confusing flat with jumping. On the flat, we have the same system worldwide. You, why don't you ever just tell it as it is? You keep your own ratings because you don't trust their handicappers. I totally trust the Of course the Irish you do, handicapper. otherwise there'd be no point in doing the work. Well, I, if you I trusted don't. them, you'd take their figures. No, you would not. Why, if, if they're working on a different system, why would you take their figures? Do, <sighs> hang, do the Irish now, with our, doing our figures, do they have an acceptable ex success rate? With, with us putting them in on our ratings. Is it acceptable? Yes or no? Uh, probably not. You don't know, do you? I don't know, no. Okay. The answer is yes, it is. So we're doing a perfectly good job. We do the work. We make those decisions. They're a bit higher than, than they are in Ireland, and everyone's happy. Josh is a far Kunko. He says that was the best two-year-old he saw at Asker, even though it didn't win. Uh, time will tell. Corto the Nap has uh, uh, tweeted. Uh, Corto, of course, one of your favourite horses, wasn't it? Phil? You could rate everything through Corto stuff. My favourite. Your full, favourite? Full stop. Not just Mrs Smith. Our favourite. Oh, that's so lovely. I could just imagine you having a quarto party. Um, quarto the nap. Uh, this is interesting. I don't know if this is true because I haven't checked it, but I'm sure it is. Lady Aurelia was quicker than profitable mm. at Ascot. Does that mean she is immediately rated higher than him? Well, do you she go is, on times? She, um, well, I think what the times do, for, you know, from Graham's point of view, doing the turtles, that reassured him that it wasn't just a fluky one-off against a load of moderate fillies. So I think that gave him reassurance. You know, so the time, the time is you know, really important. The fact that her time was faster than the King's stand is absolutely sensational. Phil, that's just about it. It's been absolutely terrific as always. I hope the viewers have enjoyed it. I really have. I just love the battle. We did actually get a few more. Um, we did get quite a few uh, emails in, and I didn't even get to the emails earlier. Have we got time to do it? Yes, we, go on. Do, give me we've a got 30 one. seconds, Come Phil. On. Um, and I don't think I'm going to get there because I'm, um, I'm in the wrong place. I go, oh, no, time's running out. This is just terrible. Um, I'm not going to have time. We're going to have to save these for the next um, Ask the Handicapper. But I'm many. Oh, here's good. David Lister, Ask the Handicapper. Um, I'm surprised Phil ever bothers to appear on ATA. He must have a strong constitution. To be honest, that's a good way of ending, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm paid a fortune. Final thing. We've got 10 seconds left. Live on At the Races, would you like to drop countermeasure to 100 now? No. Okay, on that bombshell, that was Ask the Handicapper.